To download the file, you will need to visit archlinux.org. As soon as you arrive at the home page, visit the downloads link on the top right. Scrolling down, you can see the hash value for Arch. We will revisit this later. Further down, I click on the worldwide geo.mirror link. This brings up a simple page where you can download the ISO file. It is only just over one gig, so we'll download very quickly. When I am in the folder where I place my OS files, if I type CMD in the address bar, it takes me to the CLI of the file location. Typing DIR shows me the folder contents. Here, we're going to verify the hash value by using the certutil function. certutil minus hash file, followed by the file name. Lastly, by SHA-256. Make a note of the hash value. Returning to the page, click on the SHA-256 sums file to show the hash values match on the output. For any distro to work on VirtualBox, you need to check virtualization technology is enabled in the BIOS. My laptop is an MSI, so checking on the Advanced tab, we can see virtualization and VT-D are both enabled. Once your VirtualBox is open, you are going to set up the environment for importing the Arch file. Click New and then give your VM a name. Naming it Arch Linux. Auto completes the subtype and version further down. Return back to the settings to make several changes. On the System tab, I alter the base memory to somewhere within the green zone. To get enough juice from my laptop, I use four CPUs when I am on the Processor tab. Back on the General, then Advanced tab, I need to make sure the clipboard is bidirectional for copying. Moving to the Display tab, whack the video memory up to its fullest. On the Storage tab, we need to import the ISO file so that the VM can boot Arch Linux. By clicking on the CD icon, then add Import the Arch Linux ISO file as it's highlighted. Click the Choose button and it appears under Controller IDE. Just one more setting, the network setting, and I choose Bridged Adapter, so it is given an IP from my local wireless router. We can now start up the Arch Linux virtual machine. Now it has been built. It takes a little while to start up here, but it uses the VirtualBox platform to subsequently boot into the Arch OS. Just hit the first option here, so that it begins the setting up of Arch Linux. I change the visual settings so I can read the writing on the screen by visiting view. Now we can see the boot up process just fine, which isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but hey, we only need to do this once. Once completed, it will boot into root mode. Here, we need to go through two processes. Synchronizing the databases is important, so we use pacman minus capital SY. The second process is to install the key ring package that contains the latest keys. So it is the same command followed by Arch Linux hyphen key ring. This completes the first phase of the install, but the second one isn't too tough. To begin the complete install, type arch install at the prompt. This process is a little long-winded and requires you answering a bunch of questions, but it is totally worth the wait. Here is the menu with sections to complete. The first one is your language, so hit enter to go into this area. It has defaulted to English, so we are set. I want to set up my keyboard for UK too, so I can do this here. The disk configuration is fairly straightforward and again, only needs to be set up once. Click best effort. And once you confirm this, it wants you to confirm the file system we are going to use. I personally choose BTRFS. Finally, it asks if you want to use compression, so hit yes. You can now review the disk setup and confirm you are happy. Navigate to the back button and move to the bootloader section. There are many different options here, but we are going to stick with Grub. Grub is the most common bootloader in Linux. Moving down the list, we are going to keep the host name as Arch Linux. Set your root password here. So the machine is protected at boot and not using some awful easy password. 
Now you can create a user account, which you must do as you must never use a machine as a root user. I create my own account here, so I am part of the first order. Confirm the username and password and head back to the menu and choose the desktop profile. It defaults to GNOME once you go into this area. All the profiles are in alphabetical order, so head down to GNOME and select this one. For graphics drivers, we are using a virtual environment, so I think the best choice is VMware stroke VirtualBox, seeing as this is what we are using. There are only a couple more settings to add here, and then we are done. Heading back to the main menu, navigate to audio. The most popular choice is the Pipewire engine, so select this. For the network configuration section, we are going to use Network Manager to control your wireless connections. The additional packages area is optional, but here you can choose packages to download and install. I place NeoFetch on here and sudo, as we will be using this a lot in Linux. One of the last configurations here is the time zone. I set my environment up to be in Europe stroke London. That, for now, is pretty much the whole process. Hit install, and the process will run through automagically. Time to make that coffee, as you will be playing with this for a while, that I promise. I had a problem with my recording software, so was unable to film the final part. At the root prompt on the CLI, you can use the pacman command to install some final applications. Exit out of there and type shutdown now to complete your install and reload the VM. You've done it. The only element left before you can boot your Arch Linux is to remove the ISO file from the VirtualBox VM. Click on storage and navigate to where the disk image is. Click remove from virtual drive and once complete, start up the virtual machine. Just select Arch Linux from the virtual box pop-up. If all goes well, you will be presented with the username you created in the setup process. Type in your password and you are good to go. It will load straight into the desktop environment. It is fairly easy to use if you are familiar with Linux desktops. Just jump in, click on the menu at the bottom of the screen and see what is available to you. You can always install new applications using Pac-Man. Thank you so much for watching this video today by G-Man. We hope you get into Arch Linux, one of the finest Linux distros. If you have any others you like, why not put in the comments below. Like and share this video and see you next time.